Hi, this is Sherry from the blog OurLifeHomeschooling.com, where I share homeschooling encouragement for everyday moms. I'm going to be talking today about how to homeschool a large family. If you have watched any of my previous videos, two weeks ago I did a video um, just talking openly about what it's like to have a large family. My husband and I did not come from a large family. Uh, there were four kids in both our families. Um, so I know that in today's standards that is kind of large, um, but certainly not quite as large as our family. At the time of this recording, we have nine children. Our oldest is 17 and our youngest is 17 months and we have one more on the way. So that's quite a wide range of kids to be homeschooling. So this is not something that's familiar to us. It's something that uh, we never really planned uh, would be a part of our future and definitely something that we have had to learn as we go and figure it out. So I'm gonna be sharing just some tips that I have learned. I'm still learning. There's a lot that I'm still learning. I hope that this is something that you can find helpful whatever size family you have. The first tip is to encourage your kids to be independent learners. There is no way possible that a large family mom could teach each child individually for every single subject. So encourage them to be independent learners specifically for subjects like math, reading, and writing. These are areas where they're going to progress individually. They're all gonna be at a different level. So for us, this means that I am always working one-on-one -on -one with whatever child is learning to read, write, and beginning the foundations of math. Um, so my older kids are working independently. The ones that can read and write are slowly learning to do things on their own. And I am always working with the kindergartner, the first grader, maybe a second grader who is learning the basics. Tip number two, use morning time and read aloud time to do work that you plan to do all together as a family. The benefits of these times, especially morning time for us, is that we're already gathered together. So it just makes sense that if there's something that I wanna teach them all together, that we do it during morning time. When you have a large family, it's hard to gather everyone. It's, um, you know, there's always somebody going here, going there, and it's just hard to gather everyone. So it's easy to do it around a meal. We usually have breakfast together, and after that, we will sit around and have morning time. I've done posts on morning time. You can see them on the blog. For us, we like to do some subjects together. For example, Bible reading, uh, scripture memory, current events. And there are just a couple other subjects that we like to do all together. And then in the afternoon, after lunch, we have our read aloud time. 
and I read to everyone a chapter book. I also read science to them. Now, um, I would say for our oldest kids, they will be here for some of the work that we do together, and then sometimes I will dismiss them and because they have other things that they, you know, more work that they have to work on, and I'll just finish doing the morning time or the read aloud time with my younger kids who still need some other things. Tip number three, prioritize housework. When we started homeschooling, our focus was primarily academic. I wanted to make sure that this was going to work, it was going to be a good education, um, and we had a kindergartner and two preschoolers and an infant. So as far as the house, at that time, you know, we were kind of in a different place. It seemed like I was able to do most of the housework. Of course, it was a lot, and I, you know, a lot of times felt behind, but um, we would do our chores in the afternoon. Getting the house all picked up and clean before we started school was something that felt like an impossibility to me when we had all young kids because I just felt like with two toddlers coming around and undoing everything that I was picking up and cleaning, by the time we would get started on our schoolwork, we, wouldn't, we would never get to it. We would never get to our schoolwork because they were just kind of undoing everything we were doing. So when we started, I made housework kind of, it took a back burner and our schoolwork was really my first priority. And um, it really was that way for a little while while we established a good foundation. And again, till our kids were more independent and could read and write on their own. But as our family grew, I realized this was not sustainable anymore. The larger our family became, um, it's when you're in a large family, everything is more. There is more food to make, more cleanup, more laundry. Everything takes longer. And um, I, we hit a point where I felt like the order in our house was just slowly sinking. And we really needed some, we needed to change things. I shifted and I, I realized that we just had to make our housework a priority. So at this point, we do chores right after our morning time. So we have breakfast, morning time, and then we do chores right in the beginning before any of the kids get to their independent work. That way, uh, when they start their independent work, the kitchen is clean, everything is picked up, everything is put in order. Of course, it's, it's never perfect. You really have to be flexible, but it really gives us a good start. When you have a large family, um, you know, you can have a place completely clean and it can go from beautiful to just a wreck very quickly. And so I have found that we really just need to start with everyone on the same page with a clean slate. Tip number four, as much as possible, try to stay with the same curriculum for the main subjects. Now, I wanna be careful when I say this because I know that some people already are going to balk against this because you've been in some kind of curriculum that you really just don't like and you know you just you have to do something else and I am definitely in favor of that um, if you are doing something that is just not working for you you should by all means change and do something else however I think something that is little known about large families is what I like to call the trickle down effect with your first child you know we work really hard to teach them things like how to tie their shoes, how to ride a bike, how to put their shoes away, how to make their bed, just all those simple little things. What I found is that with our younger kids, I have gone to teach them some of those things, how to read, how to write, how to make their bed. And you know, they, it's just a skill that they already have picked up so much on that it you know, I realized they don't need a ton of instruction like my first and my oldest kids did. So when you choose the same curriculum for each of your kids, or when you try to keep it the same as much as possible, that trickle down effect really um, works wonders. As much as possible, try to stick with the same curriculum as much as it meets the needs of your children individually. Tip number five is to let your older kids take breaks in between subjects to read or play with your younger children. So this would be like 
your toddler or the baby. Sometimes I'll have them take a break and read or take the toddler outside to play on the swing set. This um, has been, it's, a, it's great for the younger kid because then they obviously are entertained and have something, someone to do something with them. And it's great for the older kids too. Number six, seriously limit outside activities. This is a really tricky one. Even if you have your kids each pick one thing that they really like doing and that's their thing, when you have a large family, that is a, still a ton of activities that you're involved in. So um, this is not one that is really uh, easy to manage or um, it's easy to say limit activities, but when it comes down to it, it it's very hard to do it practically. Um, We've been a little creative with our schedule. Our older boys like one like soccer more than basketball. And soccer is a spring and fall sport and basketball is a winter sport. So that kind of evens that out. Um, some of our girls have chosen, instead of choosing a sport for this year, um, they love baking and they have started a neighborhood bake sale that they do once a month. And they also get together with some friends. We have some other girls that really are interested in baking. And once a month, they have a baking competition. It's a big deal. They plan for it. Um, we've done different themes like Greek and Indian food. Um, they plan all their recipes ahead of time. We have to you know, work ahead of time to get the ingredients. And they get together. It's a competition. They're judged. And this is, you know, a way that they have wanted to, this is the one thing that they wanted to do. So we've made it a priority for them. And the nice thing about it is that it, um, it's something that a couple of them want to do. So, and it's, and it's all at one time, the whole family can do it. So we're not in all these different places, but as much as you can try to limit outside activities. Number seven, check their work. I have learned this one the hard way. Um, there have been times where I just, I was not on top of things, um, maybe especially during a move or after having a baby. And when you're in a large family, things can slip through the cracks very easily. And if you're not checking their work, then they, um, this is really when a lot of times they'll get behind or they'll just kind of get sloppy with their work. And then once you come back and check it, you realize you're going to be having to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with them for them to go back and like relearn a lot of these concepts because they have missed things. So make it a priority to check their work every day. Of course, in our family, it, it doesn't always happen, but it's my goal and it's a great way for me at the end of the day to just check in with them, to feel like I'm sitting down, looking them in the face, looking at all their work and I, I do look at it. I wanna see the actual math lesson. I wanna see their writing work for that day. I wanna know exactly what they covered. It takes usually anywhere from two to five minutes, so it's short, unless they need help with something. Number eight, invest in a hobby. I have found that when you invest in a hobby or do something that you enjoy regularly, um, it helps me to just be more energized and excited about my work at home with my kids. If um, When you're a large family mom, there are always dishes, there's always laundry, there's always something you should be organizing or some area that you just want to get to that you're behind on. There are whole seasons when you just hardly have any time to yourself. Um, and I found that if I don't step away from it all, and do something I enjoy, I can get depressed. So when I say invest in a hobby, yes, it might mean that you walk away from a messy kitchen or that you have things that are undone on your to-do list to just spend a little bit of time, you know, maybe one evening a week or, you know, whatever works for you to spend some time doing something that you enjoy. It will pay dividends because you will come back with just a renewed love for your kids and um, for me, always just an appreciation for what I do here at home. Tip number nine is be flexible. When you're in a large family, you things are not gonna be as put together as they would be if you were doing less. And it can be so easy to compare yourself to um, other people that have different lifestyles 
and to always feel like you can never keep up with just the very basic housework or basic responsibilities. But I think it's important to remember that your, your kids are gonna grow up, they're gonna grow up. When you don't have babies anymore in the house, it is gonna get easier. You are gonna have more and more time. And there, there's gonna come a time when you have a lot more freedom to you know, spend time doing things that you enjoy or to keep up with things, to keep the house updated or your decoration your, or your home decor you know, maybe will be exactly what you like it. And, but in this moment, when you have a lot of children and you still have young ones, you have to be flexible and um, you have to be okay sometimes with old carpet or with things not being put together exactly the way you want. The last tip is to prioritize prayer and time in God's word. Having a large family is a wonderful blessing. It is also a huge responsibility. And um, I know what it's like to be a very busy mom you feel like you have no free time in certain seasons of life. Um, I can think of times after we had a baby where I felt like there were, you know, several days that went by that I just didn't have any free time. You know, you have kids that are getting up early and then you have an infant that, you know, they don't go to bed right at eight o'clock. So you're up with them till late and then sometimes they're up in the middle of the night. And in those moments, sometimes the only time I could get God's word in me was to listen to it through the Bible app on my phone and just to live in an atmosphere of prayer throughout the day, asking for the Lord's help. But when you're not in those seasons and you do have some free moments, I think one question I like to ask myself is, when I get my first bit of free time, what do I do? Where do I turn? What do I spend that time doing? I have found that spending time in God's word and in prayer is the source of my strength. It doesn't have to be long or belabored. Um, it doesn't have to look a certain way, but just keeping him first and recognizing your need for his help. So these are some things I have learned homeschooling a large family. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have liked this video, would you please like and subscribe? This helps YouTube to see what kind of content that you want to see more of. Thanks for listening in. Have a great day.